Well, hi, and thanks for joining me here in my uh, shop. And I'm uh, just finishing up on this guitar amplifier. Um, it hasn't been too tough. It turns out that all it's suffering from is a uh, bad rectifier tube. So I rectified that problem <laughs> by replacing that tube. But now I really think we need to give this a proper test. Um, playing it through a little speaker like this, you know, I don't know if that's really a fair test. So uh, I do have, let me disconnect this here. <clears throat> Just leave this out of the way a little bit. Yes, I actually have a guitar amp, and there's the speaker. You can see the outline of it right there. Get an idea of the size. And this is a very, very similar amplifier. There's a lot of these around. Um, sort of 1960s amplifiers. Now, let's see if I can. Yeah, I think what I can do here besides showing you the back of my head there, is uh, I can hook this speaker up to this amplifier. I'm going to want to remove one speaker wire and, and not have it connected into the circuitry of, of this amplifier. And uh, that, I think that's what we're going to do here. Okay, so I uh, removed uh, one speaker wire here. So the speaker is now independent of the other amplifier. I'm going to connect these. And let's connect them right onto these posts here. That's good too. Okay. Very good. Going down. And, uh, tip this back. Plug it in. Okay, I'm going to want to do a voltage check right away on the chassis. They've had it unplugged now. Okay, it's on. We're good, according to that test, but I'm going to turn the uh, plug around and double check. Ouch. Let me stop banging my head into things here. Okay, this should make the chassis hot. That was the measurement we saw last time. Yeah, 105, 198, yeah. So it's it's low. It's reading 98 because I still have the current restriction on for the amplifier. Um, I wish I had a uh, another meter. I wish I had a clunkita meter. Yeah, uh, clunkometer. I need a clunkometer. I'm thinking hard. Do I have one? No, I don't think I do. In fact. That'd be uh, a clunky meter, you know, old meter that's got a low, low input and things. Yeah, oh, 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 you know what? I think I might have one now. 
question is, where might I have that one? I might have it right here. Let's check it out. Let's see. My clunkimeter. Oh, look at it. It's still digital. But this is meant for use on a power system. So it probably has a low input impedance. Specifications. Pages 2 and 3. That uh, ranges accuracy, resistance accuracy. What? Uh, what it means by that? Ranges. And resistance is only 0 to 200 ohms. That's all this thing does. Yeah, this really isn't meant, you know, it's not a shop. And come on, give me the number. Oh my gosh, it's not going to tell me. All kinds of information in here. Input impedance. Come on. Well, you know what? Let's just give it a try and see. See if it. Uh, I suspect what will happen if the uh, input impedance is low enough. <coughs> Excuse me. That voltage reading will disappear entirely. Let's let's just give it a go. Let's just give it a try, right? Who wants to see me read the manual on this thing? <coughs> oh, some dust must have come out of it. Oh boy. Shows how often I get this this guy out. Hmm. <coughs> Okay, I think I've recovered from a bit of a coughing uh, session there. So, uh, okay, well, let's just try and see if we can't read. The, oh, you know what? This is going to require a battery. Handy to have your your clamp on meter ready at any moment's notice. <laughs> How do you like that? 200 volts. What are we going to see here? Okay, that's reading uh, one point, you know, around one volt. That's 0.9 volts there. So here we go. Gonna do it. You won't be able to see it. Hey. Okay. Here we go. One hundred and six volts. Hmm, exactly the same reading. Okay, so now this does raise the question: just how much current could somebody draw out of this? The way it is. Now, what I'm really trying to figure out is: uh, I mean, I've already looked at it inside, so no, there's no actual direct connection to the chassis from the power line. So there's a capacitor, and they're doing this somehow in the circuit. Maybe you could take a look at the circuit. Then. Hey. That's a good idea. Take that battery out of there. Because uh, I don't think I'll be calling this guy into service for a long time to come. But always handy to have your clamp on ammeter. Ready to go. <laughs> with a nice uh, shoulder strap so you can throw it over your shoulder and take it with you. Yeah. Well, we can do something really silly and try lighting a light bulb from there. And that would be a silly thing to try, wouldn't it? Or something else. Wait, what was that? 
do we hear here? A little crashing in the speaker. Oh, that should, that should, that should work good with a, a proper input. But I really want to settle this question of, will this kill me? That's a good question worth settling, um, without any doubt. Okay, so let's try the light bulb thing here. Okay, this is not so awkward. I just need to ground my clip lead here. Something smells very hot in this amplifier. Maybe it's just not been operated for a long, long time. I'm also hearing a bit of popping. Didn't, didn't seem to react to the setting of the volume. I'm not sure what that is. Very faint popping, so. Okay, let's get this grounded and get on with it here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry about that, it took a little while. Will the light bulb light? Not light the light bulb. Will it give somebody a shock? I have not answered that question. Um, well, things got a little disappointing for me when I went to edit all the videos for that I've been shooting, and I got mixed up between camera on and camera off, and I failed to video a couple of steps, and instead I videoed my empty shop in between. <laughs> the step. So what I'm going to do here quickly is try to replicate what I did already, especially around the uh, chassis being electrified. And uh, and I'll just tell you what I did. I'm not going to repeat all the other stuff I did. But this is the best I can do to salvage the video I made, <laughs> basically. So uh, last thing that was happening was I was using a voltmeter to test the voltage on the chassis and I was attempting to light the light bulb to provide very solid evidence that there isn't much power behind the high voltage. Now let's see. I'll just check it again here. Okay, so right now it's plugged in so that the chassis reads zero to earth ground. Look, put my hand on it. So I'm gonna flip it around again. should result in a reading at this point of, there it is, 110 uh, volts on there. So I had done the light bulb test and showed that you cannot draw enough current to even light a small light bulb. S still means you can get a shock off it. Maybe not much of a shock, but you can still get a shock from it. So this is just a neon bulb, neon tester had this since I was like, uh, I don't know, 10 years old or something. <laughs> My parents bought me this for Christmas. <laughs> it gives you an idea what kind of 10 year old I was. So I still have it. Eh? So we can put this on. Me, oh, I'll throw it around. Let me just turn out some lights here. It's a little hard to see this with the lights on, of course. So put it on there. And can you see the light? Yes, you can. And just and it goes on and off with my finger on it. A little hard to see, isn't it? But it's on. So now it takes almost zero current. Really, it takes zero current to light these things. So with the voltage there, uh, you can light one of these. So if you don't have a voltmeter and you have one of these, you can figure out which way which way the plug is turned. Now that, that's, ooh, that's the primary lesson of this, is 
be aware of which way you have one of these guys plugged in with the non-polarized plug. That's about the best I can tell you about it. So, uh, the other thing I did was, because I, I, I could feel a fair bit of heat coming from the tubes, and I'm not sure is that normal or not, I began to be a little suspicious that maybe the plate currents were high in one of the tubes, and that would be because the uh, grid has been pushed positive from a leaky grid blocking capacitor, which is a very, very common problem, and you can't normally hear it. You can't tell that, that that's happening until you start replacing uh, tubes from running too much plate current through them. So. What I did was I got my voltmeter out and I checked the grid voltages. There's three of them all together, two on the 12AX7, one grid on the 50C5. And I compared them to the cathode uh, voltage. So I put my meter cathode to grid. And in every case, I got a somewhat negative voltage as expected. On the 50C5, I think it was minus 9.5, if I remember right. And that's right, right what my... Uh, tube manual says it should be. So consequently, I'm not worried about excessive plate current in this amplifier. In fact, I think the amplifier is in perfectly good shape. And uh, sounds great. Uh, no hum. It's fantastic. So uh, I think this thing really needs, I think it really needs a really good test.
Well, thanks for watching all this on this uh, guitar and amplifier, Canadian built guitar amplifier. Thanks. And see you on the next video. I'm just about ready to start the next thing, and it's going to be something I've never really worked on before.